Hello and welcome to this Arkham Express 2013 demonstration where I'm going to show you how we can create this reindeer advent calendar out of two pieces of wood. So first of all I'm going to go straight across to Arkham Express and you'll see that I've got a few installed modules there. So I've got vector tools which means I can use vector layers inside my model. I've also got the nesting module which comes along with advanced 2D machining. So you can't have nesting without advanced 2D machining, they come together. But you can have advanced 2D machining and no nesting. So I do have advanced 2D machining and this is so I can um, perform rest machining. It also means I can add bridges uh, to my parts. I've also got the nesting module, which means I can nest my parts in my model. You can find out more about all of our modules if you go to artcam.com, Floyd's Dash Express, and then have a look at modules there. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is import an image that I'm going to use to create my vectors of my reindeer. So here you can see I've got reindeer.jpg, and I'm just going to drag and drop straight into ArtCam. I'm going to use all the default parameters here and say OK. So I've got my image inside ArtCam Express and you can see that we've got all of these browns, different shades and greys which make up our 2D image here. So I want to reduce the number of colours. So I can select reduce colours. I'm just going to bring my slider down. So I've only got four colours. This gives me enough detail so I can create my vector. I want to join these three off-whites or brown colours together. So I can just drag them into one another. And you can see my image updates as I do this. So now I've technically only got two colours, white and then this beige colour. So I'm going to use the outline of this beige colour to create my vectors so I can say bitmap to vector. I'm going to have a high speckle size of 80 pixels and that's so we're not picking up any of these numbers here. I'm going to change my colour here to be the secondary colour that we create the boundary from so we're creating the boundary around our beige colour and not the white. Here you can see the white is the primary and then this creamy beige is the secondary. So now I'm going to say create vectors and you can see that my vectors are shown in magenta as they're highlighted around my image. So now what I'm going to do is actually remove all of these links. And I can do this in bitmaps, colour, reset all links. And this means I've got a bit more detail, so I can actually draw these uh, doors on by hand. I'm going to change the transparency of my bitmap using this slider at the top here. I'm also going to zoom in. Before I start drawing the doors here using vectors, I'm going to resize my model. So if I go to Model, Set Size, I can change the height to 550 millimeters. This scales the entire image, so my vectors and my bitmap at the same time as the actual model. Now I've done this, it's actually going to be actual size, so I won't need to resize the vectors again. So I can start creating these doors uh, more accurately as they're going to be the actual size as they will be when they're machined. So I'm going to create a square first of all, height and width of 30 with a corner rad of 2 millimeters, and I'm going to position this square over number 14. I'm going to say create and you can see it's, it's created like so, so we can close that form down. I'm now going to copy this by using the block copy tool. So I'm going to do an offset. Distances are gaps 
So we're going to have a gap of 5 millimetres in the X and Y in between each uh, square. And we want to have six columns and three rows. So I'll just type that in here. Six columns, three rows. And I can say apply. And you can see that my squares are now copied accordingly. You can see that I've actually got one long door in here, but I've got two squares, so I can edit these. I'm going to select one of my squares, go into the node editing by pressing the N on my keyboard, then I can hover over these nodes and press C to cut them off there. Once I've done that, I can delete that portion. I'm going to do the same of this square here, hover over the node where I want to cut and press C on my keyboard and I can delete the portion I don't want. Then I'm going to exit node editing so I can join these two together. So I'm going to shift select them. First of all I want to join with a straight line. So join vectors with a line. You can see they're joined at the top here and now I want to just close them with a line. And they're closed at the bottom here. And I've completed that door. Now I just want to create the remaining doors. I'm going to go back to my creating a rectangle function and we'll create a rectangle with a width of 40 and a height of 30. Corner rad again is going to be 2. So I'll just see where that's been created and I'll move it into the correct position. It doesn't have to be exactly on the model as the, the picture is actually just a guide. So I'm going to say create and I can close that form down. Now I'm going to use the block copy again. So distances are gaps. I'm going to keep the same parameters. This time I just want one column of three. So I can apply that like so. What I also want to do is copy these across and the quickest way to do this is to hold down my control key which brings out a copy like so and then if I hold down my alt key as well it snaps to that alignment angle. So I can just drag these out and keep them at the same level like so. I also want to have a drawer at the top and I can simply do exactly the same. Control which drags a copy out and then alt which snaps it into place. So I can position him somewhere up there. Now I've created all of my vectors for my advent calendar. I can simply select them all and export them. So vectors, export, and then save them to the correct folder. So I've got a folder on my desktop called Reindeer Advent. So I'm going to call this reindeer vectors and that's going to be saved as an EPS file so we'll hit save so now I can actually close this model down and I'm going to open up the new one which is the correct size of my block of material so I'm going to close this model down no need to save my changes because I've already exported my vectors so I'm going to open a new model width and height of 450 millimeters and it's going to be a thick block of material of 50 millimeters. I say OK. First thing I want to do is import my vectors. So vectors, import, select them and then open them up. And you can see they're positioned there. I can center them in the model first thing I need to do is ungroup my vectors. So Control u ungroups your vectors. Then I can deselect my outer vector. I'll group all of the inner vectors. Control g on the keyboard. You can see they turn purple when I've grouped them. So now I'm actually ready to create the toolpaths for my main body of my advent calendar. I'm going to do this inside the 3D view.
So I'll toggle to the 3D view. And I'll view from the top. You see we've already got our block of material. We set that up uh, when we opened up our model. So the first toolpath I want to create is my area clear to remove all of the material from inside of these. And that's going to create the space where we can put our little items um, underneath each door. So I'm going to go to toolpaths, create an area clearance toolpath. So the start depth zero, finish depth, I'm going to put as 40 millimeters. So we've got a depth of 40, and then we've got a little bit of material back of the back. We've got 10 mil of material, which is the back of our um, advent calendar. And then I'm going to add a tool. So I'm going to add in a 4 millimeter end mill because I know that my rad here is 2 millimeters, so a 4 millimeter tool is going to go in and machine that away nicely. Now I can simply calculate. And you can see that my toolpaths have been created. Now I just want to create a profile toolpath to cut out to my reindeer. So I can select this outer tool, um, this outer vector, select my profile toolpath. I want to machine along the outside. Start depth 0, finish depth 50, as I want to cut all the way through my 50 millimeter block of material. Go to my profiling tool and I will select a 5 millimeter end mill. I want to add bridges because I want to be able to hold my block in place so it doesn't come loose when we machine it out. So I'm going to have a constant number of 4, I can have a length of 10 and a thickness of 5 and I'm going to do 2D bridges and I'm going to say add. View from the top and we can have a look at those. Now if they're not in suitable places, maybe you want to move this one on the antler, we can say edit bridges and then they become available for repositioning. And I can just drag them around my model like so. So I can have this one here, I can move this one along to here and so on. Once you're happy with the position uh, of your bridges, you can just say apply and then close that down. Now you won't make any more changes. So I'm just going to hit calculate. And you can see our profile toolpath made. If I close this down, open up toolpaths, we've got our area clear and then our profile toolpath. So first of all, I will simulate the area clear. And you can see it's removed all of those material there so we've got a number of different pockets 24 pockets and I'll simulate my profile toolpath and you can see that we've machined away all that material but we've left in some material there where we've got our bridges now if you want to see this more clearly we can go to simulation and change the colors so I can choose to have a chestnut material and we can also put a depth color in there if we want so I can have wherever the tool has machined away material it's going to be whatever is your primary color here so we can just toggle between them so now I've got this and I'm happy with my simulation I'm going to save my toolpaths so I can say toolpaths save and I can browse to the folder where I want my toolpaths to be saved. So I'm going to say browse. I'm going to create a new folder and call it toolpath. And then what I can do is choose to append toolpath details to file names. So that means we're going to have our tool in the file name which is going to make it easier when we want to machine our part. And also I'm going to save toolpaths to separate files and that's because we've not got an automatic tool changer. I'm just going to um, do a manual tool changer here. I'm going to export it as G-code and we've got two different tools so we want to save them to separate toolpath files. Uh, so I'm just going to hit save. 
if I navigate to that folder now you can see I've got toolpath and it's got some files in there if I open it up you can see we've got toolpath one area clear using our end mill four millimeters saved as a dot tap file and then we've got our second one toolpath two which is our profile and that's using our five millimeter end mill again saved as a tap file okay so now I've got the main body done I want to create the vectors for my doors which are going to just finish off this design so what I can do is open up a new model this time it's going to be size 250 by 300 with a thickness of just 15 millimeters so we don't want really thick doors obviously so I'm going to say OK I'm not going to save my changes this time OK so again I'm going to import the same vectors import the reindeer vectors and you can see they don't quite fit in my model but I don't need this outer vector anymore so I can actually ungroup them so control U to ungroup my vectors turn from purple to magenta I can select the outer vector and delete it and then I'm going to centralize all of these so I'll just center them in my model shortcut for that is F9 so there's a couple of things that I need to do here the first thing I'm going to do is create offsets so I'm going to offset first of all these vectors outwards because we've got these are the exact size of the pockets we've made we want our doors to be slightly bigger so I'm going to choose the offset functionality I'm also going to group these together just to make it easier for selection I'm going to first of all offset them outwards right by two millimeters we don't want to delete the visual vectors because we're actually going to use them again and we don't really need to select the resulting offset either so I'll offset those and you can see they've been offset outwards so that's going to be our actual door size and how they're going to look on our final design but what I'm going to do because we're going to do front and back machining to create these doors because we want to create a little um, lip so that they can slot nicely into the pockets and then have an overhang but we also want detail on the other side so I'm going to select this inner vector again and I'm going to offset it this time really small amount just so we're under machining um, and so our doors can fit nicely and slot nicely into our pockets that we've already created the drawers if you will so I'm going to offset by 0 0.2 millimeters inwards and this time I'm going to delete the original vector because I don't need it I'm going to offset that and you can see they slightly get offset inwards okay so I need to finish off my my doors now first thing I want to do is create a handle so I'm going to create a circle I can just draw them in I'm going to do a radius of two millimeters create so a diameter of four and I'll cancel that I'm going to with my circle selected I can shift select this vector here and I can position it in the center like so now I can use my block copy to paste it one in every single one of these so I'm going to use my block copy tool this time rather than using distance or gaps I'm going to use distances or offsets and do an offset of 35 millimeters column 6 rows 3 and say apply so you can see we've got two handles here for this long draw you can leave it like that if you want or you can delete one of these and then centralize this circle so these are going to be our handles naturally we're going to need some handles for these drawers so I can simply using my control key copy one out and I can centralize it like so shift select and then center vector I'm going to use the block copy tool again 
offset 35, this time one column, three rows. So I can apply that and then simply using my control key to make a copy, using my alt key to keep them on the same level, I'm going to position them off center. Then with them selected, I can select one of these vectors and then I can simply center them horizontally and then they get positioned in the right place. The last one I need to do is up here and I can simply copy using the control key and then shift select this vector and position it in the center. Okay, so we're getting there now. We need to add some text, we need numbers on all of our doors so everyone knows which door to open on which day. So I'm going to go to my text functionality, create vector text. Now I'm using the font seagull and size 25 uh, points. So first of all I'm just going to click anywhere and make the number 1 and say done. I'm going to position this number 1 in the bottom corner of this vector. So I'm going to select my number 1 and shift select that vector. I'm going to position at the bottom and align to the left as well. You can see it's in the correct place. Now this number is in the correct place. I'm going to use the block copy tool again to get it in the correct place for all of these doors here. So block copy, I'm going to use the same parameters, column 6, and say apply. And You can see we get my number 1 pasted multiple times. I don't need this extra 1 here, so I can simply move him down to the bottom one here, shift select, and then align to the bottom, and then align left. Once I've done this, you've probably guessed it, I'm going to use the block copy with the same parameters but just one column and paste them up there. And then I can simply, using my control key, drag out a copy, holding down my alt, means we're keeping it on the same level. I can just position it in place using my arrow keys. Finally, we need to add one in up here. So I'm just going to drag this guy and then align to the bottom. Align left, sorry, and then align to the bottom. So now we've got the same number in every one of our doors. Obviously, we want to uh, change this. Now, I'm sorry, my text is just off the bottom of the screen there, but it's just in this drop down. Um, so, to do this, I can select my number, go to my text, and then simply change it. So, we're going to keep this one as number one, and we'll change this. So, this is going to be the more long winded uh, exercise in this tutorial. So, we can have some of the larger doors in some different numbers and it really doesn't matter what order you do them in here because obviously when you put them in you can put them in in any order whatsoever uh, so I've just skipped that bit and you can see that I've put all of the numbers in here and I've got 24 as my big door obviously all of these can be put in any pocket of the same size as with these larger ones. So now we've done this, we've got each of our doors with the, all of the inner and outer vectors and for the front and back, what we need to do is actually group each one of these together. So this is another task which is one of the more long-winded ones. So I need to just go around Control G and that's grouping all of these together. So what I'm going to do is actually just skip over this as well. So now you can see that I've grouped all of my individual doors together and make sure you don't have them grouped incorrectly like what I've done here. So I can simply control U, select the correct vectors and group and then I'll do the same here. So each door is a group and this is so we can nest correctly. So 
Nesting is our added in module that comes with advanced 2D machining. So I'm going to select all of my vectors nicely grouped together and I'm going to hit my nest button. So here I can put in my parameters. I'm going to be cutting out these pieces with a 4mm tool. I want to have a toolpath clearance of 5mm and I'll have an edge clearance of uh, 10 I don't want any mirrored parts because I've got numbers in there so that's quite important. I don't really want any part rotation because I want the grain of the wood going all in the same direction for my drawers. I just think it's more aesthetically pleasing and I want to use the model as the boundary. And then I've, I've got this, I'm going to say nest. So it just takes a few seconds and what ArtCam does is it nests everything nicely on our model. So you can see that's been positioned nicely with a nice boundary there because they were a bit too close together before. Okay, so now what we're going to do is actually ungroup everything. So we can right click and ungroup all. And this is where we're going to use the vector toolbox. So if I go over to the right hand side here, you can see we've got this vectors uh, tree. We're only working on the default layer at the moment. So all of these inner vectors, I'm actually going to select them individually. So now I've got them all selected, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say move vectors to new layer. So these have been moved to vector layer 2 and I can toggle that off and on. I can turn my default layer off and on as well. So I'm going to rename vector layer 2 and call it back vectors. And I can apply that. Turn off vector, uh, turn off my back vectors and turn on my default layer. I'm going to select everything else, right click, move vectors to new layer, and then they're going to be on vector layer 3. And I'll call this one front vectors. Okay. And apply that. So now there's nothing on my default layer. So I'm going to start with the back vectors. Now, I, uh, my front vectors can't be mirrored because I've got my text on there. But my back vectors need to be mirrored then, or uh, mirrored across my model. And that's because we're going to be machining the back. So we've got the nice little lip so our doors fit snugly into our pockets. Then we're going to turn our block of material over and then machine the detail on the front so we get our handles and our numbers. So we're going to select all of our back vectors, we're going to mirror across the model, and now we're ready to create our toolpaths. So I can go over to my 3D view. First thing I'm going to do is increase the simulation, uh, increase the resolution so my simulation looks better. Say OK. I'm going to select my toolpaths and create, I'm actually going to use a profiling toolpath because we just want to remove a little bit of material around each one of these. And We've only got a 2mm lip on the door so I can use a profile and just, as long as I use a tool bigger than 2mm. So I'm going to profile outside, finish depth of 3mm, I'm going to choose a 4mm profiling tool, that's going to remove plenty of material. I don't want any bridges, I'm not cutting all the way through and I can simply say calculate. Now I haven't selected my vectors so what I need to do is box select all of my vectors of course before I hit calculate and now my toolpath has been created. So I can simulate that if I want and we've got our um, depth colour there I can change that if I want and I can actually change my simulation colour as well. So we're just removing that bit of material so 
our doors fit nicely into our pockets. So we've machined the back now, or we've created the toolpaths at least. What I'm going to do is delete that simulation, rename this profile as in profile back, so we know when we come to machine it, say apply. And now I can go back to my 2D view, turn off my toolpaths, turn off my back, and I can start working on my front. Now, I want to do an area clear to remove this material here, to leave my handle as an upstand, and then to leave a little upstand for my number. So what I'm going to do is actually select all of these outer vectors, I'll group them together, and I'm going to offset them just by one millimeter. So when I do the area clear, we're just coming that extra bit out and not stopping at the edge of our door. So I'll select all of these holding down my shift key. First of all I'm going to group them, control G, and then I'm going to offset. So I'm going to do an offset distance of one millimeter outwards. We don't want to delete the original but I'll select the resulting offset so I can then group them quickly together. So I'll say offset and they're all selected because they're shown in magenta, I'll say control G. Now for ease of use I'm actually going to quickly group all of my handle vectors together as well. So the selecting here is actually the most long-winded process. That's just because we've got 24 of them. So once I've selected them all, I control G and group them all together. And now it's very easy to select my numbers. I can select everything, deselect, so hold down shift key, deselect the, the handle, deselect these vectors here. And I'm left with just the numbers and I can group these together. And that's the quickest way to do that because there's multiple vectors in there. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is create my area clearance. So I want to use my outermost vector and my center vector. I'm going to go to my 3D view, toggle on my vectors, and I'm going to create a new toolpath. So I'm going to do an area clearance toolpath. Start depth is zero. Finish depth, I want to be seven millimeters. And then I'm going to add my tool. It's going to be my four millimeter end mill. Select. And then I can simply calculate. Okay, so my toolpaths have been created. The second thing that I want to do is, if I just toggle off the visibility there, is to actually machine these numbers here with an upstand. So with these two vectors or two groups of vectors still selected, hold down your shift key, select your numbers as well. We're going to create a second area clearance toolpath. This time our start depth is going to be, because we've already removed, seven millimeters of material. I'm going to start at 6.5 just so we've got a bit of an overlap there and then the finished depth is going to be eight millimeters down so our numbers are just going to have a raised height of one millimeter. So I'm going to add tools now and because we've got the advanced, two machine, uh, advanced 2D machining module I can add multiple tools in here so we do rest machining so we're not doing any air cutting and wasting time. So I'm going to use the 4mm end mill again it's going to come in and remove some of the material and then I'm going to come in with a 1.5mm end mill and it's going to remove all the rest of the uh, material around that number. I'm going to calculate now and you can see we've got the toolpath coming in here and removing that extra material. So we've got two area clearance. My first one, and I'm going to call that area clear one front apply. And then I'll rename the second one area clear two front. So we know uh, that that's being machined on the front. We don't get confused with the back. So I'll turn that off. The final thing we need to do is create our cutout. So we're going to use that actual door size. I'm going to create a profile toolpath 
and we're going to cut all the way through the block of material and we don't actually need to go to the finished depth of 15 because we've already machined away 3 millimeters on the other side so I'm just going to put actually 13 millimeters in there and I know that's going to cut all the way through I'm going to choose my profiling tool 4 millimeter end mill and say select this time I want to add bridges because I don't want my my doors to become loose once I cut them out now they're nice small parts so I only really need to have one bridge on each door I can make the length of them smaller as well um, I can do a length of five and a thickness of three for example and I'm going to do 2D bridges and we'll add those and you can see them added in I don't want to edit them I'm just going to calculate so if I close this down you see we've got a tool path list I'm just going to rename this one profile front just so we're absolutely clear go to my 3D view I'm going to start doing a simulation so we don't want to simulate the back we want to first of all simulate the area clear one and this is going to leave us our upstanding handles okay so there's our handles shown now I'm going to do area clear 2. It's just going to come in, remove that extra material, and then leave our little upstand so we've got our numbers there. Now I'm going to do our profile. Whoops, I just did a toolpath summary information. Right click, simulate toolpath, and you can see our tools come in there, removed that material, and cut it out. It's also left our bridges there, you can see, and obviously we've not cut all the way through, and that's because we would have already machined the back and flipped our piece over, and that's what our profile back has done. So we don't need to cut all the way through because we've already removed three millimeters on the other side. So now all I'm going to do is save my toolpaths. So if I've got my toolpaths, I'm going to hit save. Um, I'm going to choose the same location, we can call it number two this time. So I know it's for my actual doors rather than um, the actual body of my reindeer. And again, I'm going to append toolpaths details to file name so we know what tool we're using. And we're going to save them all to separate files because we're going to use a manual tool changer. If you've got an automatic tool changer, you don't need to worry about that, but you do need to make sure that your tool number is not always the same so your tool numbers need to align up with your machine there I'm just going to save it as a tap file and say save if I navigate to that folder you can see we've now got all of those the profile back area clear one two three and then our profile and so if I open one of these edit with notepad just make that smaller. You can see that we've got all of the G-code there to control our machine tool. So that was a tutorial in how to create this wooden reindeer advent calendar. Um, thanks very much for watching. There's going to be more videos. Um, I hope you have a nice day. Thanks very much. Goodbye.